Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on how to retire earlier and with more money. If I can introduce myself to you, first of all, as you will guess from the screen, my name is Stephen Black, and I have 20 years experience working with the local government pension scheme. Most of that time spent with Prudential, the man from the Prue, but I now work for a company called AVC Wise, and it's AVC Wise that's been appointed by your respective employers to administer an employee benefit called a salary sacrifice shared cost additional voluntary contribution. Horrible terminology, I know, but we'll get to grips with that a little bit later. So what we're going to cover today, well, there are various ways of saving money for retirement outside of the local government pension scheme, so LGPS for short. But within LGPS, you've got two options, additional pension contributions, APCs, and you can get more information than APCs from your scheme. But you also have additional voluntary contributions, AVCs, and today we'll talk about what is unique about the local government pension scheme, AVC, and what your respective employers have done to make this even more of a benefit for you. Now, the information contained in the webinar, it is factual information. It doesn't constitute financial advice. You should always consider your own circumstances, and if you're in any doubt, we would always encourage you to consult a financial advisor for independent financial advice. So this is what we're going to go through. So we'll introduce you to Sarah. She's our case study for today, retiring at normal pension age of 67. We'll look at the impact on her benefits if she retires early. We'll explain this thing called salary sacrifice shared cost ABCs and how they work, how, they can, how you can use them to, uh, to, to help you retire early. We'll show you how you can apply for AVCs, the help available after today in the future webinars that, uh, that we've got going on. So so this is Sarah. Sarah, normal, pen, uh, normal pension age, yeah, 67. Um, we're assuming she retires on a pensionable salary of just less than 30,000 a year. Now, I'm going to work in the assumption that you've got a reasonable understanding of how your LGPS benefits are calculated. If you don't have or you're unsure of some of the terminology, you may find it useful to also attend one of our other webinars called Understanding the Local Government Pension Scheme. So this is Sarah. Sarah has one year in the 80th scheme. So that was the LGPS scheme that existed up until 31st of March 2008. Six years in the 60th scheme, so that was the LGPS scheme that ran from 2008 to 2014, and we're assuming she'll have 18 years in the current scheme, the 49th scheme. So add all of that up, and it tells us that Sarah can uh, expect a pension of around 14,920 and a one-off tax-free lump sum of £1,118. Where does that tax-free lump sum come from? Well, that's as a result of any years in the 80th scheme. Sarah only has one year in the 80th scheme, which is why her, her automatic tax-free lump sum is really quite low. Some of you in the call today will have lots of years in the old 80th scheme, in which you expect your automatic tax-free lump sum to be much higher. Some of you in the call didn't join local government until after 2008, in which case automatic tax-free lump sum is zero. Now, this is Sarah retiring at 67. I imagine there's a few of you looking at this thinking, I'm not going to work until I'm 67. I want to retire earlier than that. Well, actually, Sarah's no different. What we'll look at in the next slide is the impact of Sarah retiring at 64 instead of 67. Now, of course, your benefits would be worth less at 64 than 67 because you'll have three years less in the scheme. But on top of that, if you take your benefits before normal pension age, you're also facing actuarial reductions. What's an actuarial reduction? Well, basically, it's a penalty. The benefits that you have got built up would be reduced to reflect the fact that you're taking them earlier than normal pension age, which means they're now going to be paid for longer in retirement. And the impact of, of that means for Sarah, instead of having the pension of 14.9 at 67, if she goes at 64, then that combination of three years less in the scheme, plus actuarial reductions on top, takes her pension down to 10.8. She loses about 4,000 pounds annual pension. So obviously quite a significant uh, hit on our, uh, on our benefits for retiring early. Our lump sum's affected a little bit, but as you can see, not significantly. The main impact is on the, uh, the index-linked pension. 
Now, before we move on, I just want to take you back a few years when the government introduced their pension reforms, which in part was to encourage people to save more for retirement, because generally speaking, we don't. We don't save enough, yet on average we're living longer. And the encouragement to save more was that we would be allowed to take more out as a tax-free lump sum. So whichever pension scheme you belong to now in the UK, you're allowed to take up to 25% of the benefits out as a tax-free lump sum, which is much greater than what was allowed under the old rules. Now, we know Sarah's getting a tax-free lump sum already because she had one year in her 80th scheme. Some of you will have years in your 80th scheme. You also are getting a tax-free lump sum, but whatever tax-free lump sum you get from your 80th scheme, it comes nowhere near representing the 25% of the value of your benefits that you're allowed to take out tax-free. So how do you get then more of a tax-free lump sum? Well, one way of getting a bigger tax-free lump sum is at retirement, you can give up some of your pension and in exchange for giving up pension, it allows you to increase your tax-free lump sum until you get to your limit. How does that work? Well, that works on a basis of 1 to 12 called the commutation rate. What does that mean? Well, let's imagine you get to 60 and you give up £1,000 of annual pension. It means your one-off tax-free lump sum goes up to 12000 Let's think about that for a wee second, though. You're expected to live now until your mid-80s. So if you say retire at 60 and you're living to your mid 80s and you're giving up a thousand pounds of pension to increase your lump sum by 12,000, that's now a thousand of pension you're giving up this year, next year, every year for the rest of your life that would have been going up in line with inflation. And the pensioners in local government have seen their pension go up around 20% in the last 10 years alone. Never mind, say, 20 years that you might be alive when you retire. So giving up pension for lump sum at a rate of 1 to 12 isn't that good a deal unless you could guarantee that you would die early in retirement. Then you would say, give me the bigger tax free lump sum because I'm not going to be around to collect the pension for that long. But actually, wouldn't it be nice to have both get a bigger tax free lump sum, but without compromising? your index linked pension to do it, well, you can do that in local government because the rules that changed a few years ago uh, allows the members in local government to use the AVC part of your scheme as the vehicle to give yourself this bigger tax-free lump sum so that you're getting more tax-free but without having to compromise your index linked pension to do it. So essentially, best of both worlds, get a bigger tax-free lump sum, but not compromising your index-linked pension. Now, I just wonder how many of you knew that already, that you can use your AVC to give yourself a bigger tax-free lump sum, because I describe that as a huge deal for you. So the first unique thing here, local government, you are the only public sector scheme that allows its members to take the AVC back as a tax-free lump sum in its entirety. Now, two caveats to that. One is that taking your AVC completely as a tax-free lump sum means taking it when you retire with your main scheme benefits so at the same time. And two, there's always a limit. Sarah, in our example, and you'll see this later, she can have anywhere up to 71,000 in her AVC. And when she retires with her main scheme benefits at 64, she can get anything up to that limit completely as a tax-free lump sum. In fact, there's only two schemes that I've worked with since 2006 that allow its members the AVC as a tax-free lump sum. Local Gov is one. And as I say, you're the only public sector scheme that allows it. Police, fire, civil service, NHS, they can't get their AVC tax-free. Your local Gov, you can. That is a huge deal for you. Now, you've still got the flexibility when you get to retirement. If you didn't want to take your AVC as a tax-free lump sum and you wanted to use it to buy more pension, an annuity, for example, you could still do that if you really wanted to. Now, I get excited for you in local government because I say you can take your AVC as a tax-free lump sum. And some people say to me, Stephen, yeah, but I can get an ISA as a tax-free lump sum and individual savings account. So at least in the eyes, I've got access to the money if I need it. Why would I put money into an AVC 
when you're telling me I can't get it back is a tax-free lump sum until I retire with my main scheme benefits. Well, the reason you would consider paying ABCs over an ISA is because you get tax relief on your contributions. So the basic rate taxpayer gets tax relief at 20%. The higher rate taxpayer gets tax relief at 40%. Now, you all work for employers, though, if you look at the, the kind of title or the second title to this slide, you'll see salary sacrifice, shared cost, additional voluntary contributions or shared cost AVCs for short. Employers have to choose to set up the local government AVC on a shared cost basis. That's what your employers have done for you. And the benefit of doing that is that not only do you get tax relief in your contributions, you also got to get to save national insurance as well. And that's the second thing that's unique about the local government AVC, because again, you're the only public sector scheme that allows the employers to set up the AVC in a shared cost basis, which allows its members to not only save tax, but save in national insurance as well. So this is fantastic for you. So we'll look at a couple of examples of what this actually means in pounds and pence. So going back to what I was saying, if you were saving £100 into an ISA each month, what would it cost you to do that? Well, of course, it costs you £100 to do that. Uh, there's no tax relief. There's no national insurance savings. If you're the basic rate taxpayer in local government to save £100 a month into the shared cost EVC, it only costs you £68.12 pence to do that because you save tax in national insurance. And if you were saving £68.12 in your bank, building society, ISA, to turn £68.12 into £100 immediately, your money has to increase by 46.95%. So, so as I say, this is a huge deal for you and hopefully today helps you to get your head around what a valuable benefit you've got um, by being a local government pension scheme member and the fact that your employers have set the EVC up in a shared cost basis allowing you to save not only tax but national insurance as well as well god nearly nearly lost my voice there i'm that excited for you okay let's look at a a, a more in-depth example this is joe um joe earns thirty thousand a year in local government and this first column assumes he doesn't pay um, EVCs at all so he earns two and a half thousand a month he pays his standard lgps contribution of 162.50 standard tax of 259 standard national insurance of 205 he's left with a net pay of 1873 so joe here decides he wants to to save money to help him retire early and he wants to save 250 pounds a month to avcs and joe works for an employer who's uh, who set the avc up on this shared cost basis via a salary sacrifice arrangement so the first thing joe wants to do is get to grips with the terminology so a shared cost avc is one where both you as the member and your employer you both contribute you share in the cost and you as the member you're sharing that cost is always one pound per month the balance is treated as the employer's contribution now don't get too excited by that just yet because you know as well as i do your employer isn't just going to put money into your avc out the goodness of their heart what they get you to do is reduce your salary. You sacrifice some of your salary. So Joe, in our example here, he sacrifices £249 of his monthly salary. So you see salary comes down from 2500 to 2251 So he gives up £249 of his monthly salary. His employer puts that into his AVC along with his £1 contribution. So he's saving 250 a month. Now, the most common question I get asked at this stage, Stephen, is that not a bad idea? If I'm reducing my salary at the top end, will that not affect my main scheme, local government benefits? No, it will not. It would defeat the purposes of doing this if your main scheme benefits were to be affected, which is why you'll recognise here, Joe continues to pay £162.50. He still pays the same to his LGPS scheme as he always did to get exactly the same benefits. And that's because his main scheme contributions are still based on the pre-sacrifice salary, the original salary, just called notional salary. So he's saving £250 a month. He's a basic rate taxpayer. 
so he saves tax at 20%. So you'll notice Joe's income tax comes down from 259 to 209, so he saves £50 in tax. What you'll also notice is his national insurance comes down from 205 to 175. And that's because for the purposes of calculating national insurance, it is the 2251 salary that can be used to calculate his NI. So all told for Joe here, he's saving £250 a month, but he's only giving up £170.12 out his net pay to do it, thanks to the £50 that he's saving in tax and the £29.88 um, that he's saving in national insurance. Okay, so let's uh, crack on. So you have to pay ABCs from your salary. So you pay ABC from your salary, it's into your ABC, and you've got the flexibility, as Matt just mentioned, to vary your, vary your contribution, stop, start, increase, decrease, do that as often as you want. Minimum contribution of £2 per month, so £1 of your money, uh, £1 treated as your money, £1 treated as the employer's contribution. So arguably, um, you could all afford to, uh, to start an ABC after today. Um, the money you put into your ABC is then invested and your pension fund has already chosen the company responsible for investing your ABC contributions. For some of you, it's Prudential. For some of you, it's Standard Life. Some of you have got the choice of uh, either company. Now, the good thing for you, though, you've got control over how that insurance company invests your money. You can take as much or as little risk as you want, and I'll show you uh, in a little how, how to access that uh, that information and any investment returns you get they are free of tax too um now i'm not saying growth isn't important of course it is especially over a longer period of time but your reasons for paying avcs and local government um, and for the employers that you work for actually it's nothing much at all to do with the investment opportunity it's because you can save tax save national insurance with this ability up to your limit, I've taken the whole lot back as a tax-free lump sum when you retire with your main scheme benefits. Remember, if you're the basic rate taxpayer for every £100 goes in, it only costs you £68.12 to do that. That in itself represents 46.95% of an increase. So that's where you can see, don't get too hung up on fund choice and investments. Um, because as every month passes at the moment, you're paying your full amount of tax and NI that you probably don't even think about. And that's the bit that you can that you can start to save. And then as I mentioned, you've got flexibility on the way out. If you don't want to take your AVC as a tax-free lump sum, you don't have to. You could convert it into a pension and annuity, for example, if you really wanted to, uh, to do that. So back to Sarah, obvious uh, example of someone that would look to, to pay AVCs. She was looking to retire early. She's got the actuarial reduction on her benefits. Um, so the pension was taking quite a hit. What she would look to do then is pay AVCs, build up her AVC pot. And when she retires at 64, she's taken her AVC and that's the bit that helps fill the gap from 64 to 67, which is when she'll get her state pension kicking in. So this ability to take the AVC as the tax-free lump sum I mean, she's then got this big chunk of money to do the things she wants to do when she's got the time and good health to do them. Whether that's going on holiday, replacing the car, spending time with family, whatever, she's got the control. So, so let's summarise uh, <coughs> what we've covered so far. So remember, LGPS is the only public sector scheme that allows its members to take the AVC as a tax-free lump sum. That's when you retire with your main scheme benefits. Employers have to choose to set up the AVC in the shared cost basis. That's what your employers have done for you, which is fantastic for you, because that means not only do you save tax on your contributions, you also get to save national insurance um, as well. Is there a more efficient way or a better we have saving money to support your retirement. You all recognise by this stage, I am sure, I am Scottish. Um, I think what you have is a brilliant thing. If any of you can think of a better way of saving money for retirement, I would be, uh, I'd be interested to learn of it. Okay, so how do you go about applying for shared cost AVCs? Um, well, you would go to the AVCWISE uh, website first of all. 
uh, click new application. I'm working on the assumption you don't pay VCs um, already. Um, for those of you that do, then you can go and amend your contribution through the AVCWISE website. So um, you click in your application. It's like any form you've ever completed. So name, date of birth, national insurance number. So you might find it useful to have a payslip in front of you when you complete your application form. There'll be a link within the application form process to take you to, for example, Prudential's website, where you can look at the funds that are available and choose a fund which reflects the amount of risk that you want to take. So take as much risk as you want, for example, stocks and shares. At the other end of the scale, take minimal risk where you can put your money into a, a cash fund. Your employer then verifies your application. Uh, you get set up with, be it Prudential or Standard Life, and then you make your contributions from your next available salary. And as part of this process, you get access to the frequently asked questions document and the terms and conditions that, uh, that your employers put together. So you've got access to uh, all the information that, uh, that you need. So it's pretty much over to you now. Uh, hopefully you can see what a good opportunity you have and what your employer uh, has done for you. Um, if I can make a couple of suggestions, please look at a payslip, look at how much of your hard-earned income goes in tax and national insurance every month, and you probably don't even think about it. If you're a basic rate taxpayer, remember for every £100 you put into the shared cost ABC, it costs you £68.12 from your take-home pay to do that. Uh, I should have mentioned higher rate taxpayers. Some of you will be higher rate taxpayers. I've got good and bad news for you. If you're a higher rate taxpayer, you save tax at 40%. Um, but national insurance at just 2%. Uh, never too early to start. In fact, most people don't start early enough. Um, remember, £2 your minimum contribution, um, but it's never too late either. One of the advantages of putting money into the AVC close to retirement is quite simply you're not waiting that long before you're due to get the money back. So even if you're with, you know, you've got three months to go, you'd be thinking about trying to pile as much as you could in uh, over a three-month period because you're really not waiting long at all before you get the money uh, back to you. Okay, uh, after today, there's uh, further resources. There's our Knowledge Hub. There's some short explainer videos which uh, you might find useful. So anything you want to find out about um, shared cost ABCs in particular, you'll find on uh, our website. I just wrap up and bring things to a close and there was quite a number of questions on investments which I get I, I really do understand uh, questions especially at this time when the stock market can be up and down um, but, uh, but please 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 don't lose sight of the main messages that I've given you today that you've got this unique thing whereby when you retire with your main scheme benefits you can take up to your limit the whole ABC back as a tax-free lump sum, having saved tax and national insurance. So whatever you do, do not get too hung up on funds. There's nothing to stop you going into a minimal risk fund at the moment if you want and changing it later. Remember, for the basic rate taxpayer, for every £68.12 you're giving up out your take-home pay, it's £100 that goes to your ABC. That on its own is a 46.95% increase. So do not get hung up on, uh, on funds. Okay, so that's that's basically my preaching over. I hope you find that of use. Um, we see the people who don't have AVCs leaving these webinars. Um, for all the people who intend starting an AVC, which you can do, remember, from two pounds per month, about 40% of you will get round to doing it because life will take over. Try not to let life take over. Look at your payslip. Look at how much you give away in tax and NI, and it's a really sobering thing to uh, to look at that. So um, I hope that's been of benefit uh, to you today, and I will leave you to uh, to to consider and reflect on uh, the uh, all the positive messages that uh, that we shared today. Thank you very much, and live long and prosper. Thank you.